under Stalin, Siberia was a land to be plundered at will. The forests seemed limitless. Swathes of tiger were cut clear of trees, and still they're cutting. North of the city of Habarovsk, a desert. Thousands of square miles of land are denuded, dead. The hillsides are crumbling away. There are 2.3 million square miles of forest in Siberia. Trees cover an area the size of the continental United States. A quarter of the world's wood is growing here. Like the Amazon, it is one of the world's largest stores of carbon dioxide, the main greenhouse gas. Yet more than 10 million acres of this forest are being cut each year, an area the size of Holland. Soviet scientists say that is considerably more than the forests can sustain. The once seemingly infinite resource is now visibly shrinking. Most of the bears have retreated northwards, their feeding grounds destroyed. The elk, too, are rare, and the Siberian tigers and lynx deserted this wasteland long ago. Temperatures here drop to minus 40 degrees centigrade in winter and rise to plus 40 in summer. The permafrost is inches below the surface. It took millions of years for the forest to colonize this inhospitable soil. It has taken a few decades for men to chop it down. Russian logging techniques are antiquated. Up to half the wood that is cut is left to rot. Russian factories use three times as much wood to make a product. This time, they were saved by the rain. Firms like Hyundai, which want to cut the forest, could invest in sustainable logging, in replanting, and in equipment to fight the fires. But that would mean less profit in the short term 